Hello everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinist. And uh, today we're looking at the vertical turret mill. Uh, on a previous operation, uh, we had to go through and uh, do some uh, setup uh, utilizing the uh, angled head on this machine. We had to set up and drill some holes at a compound angle. So now we're back to the position where we need to align the head to the table on this machine, basically tramming the head. So that's the procedure we're going to go over today in this video, how to align the head to the table, tram the head in square, uh, and we'll go through that here in a minute. Uh, we'll break through it and I'll go through uh, all the tools required for the job and a couple different options on, on what we got here. So I'll show you the tools. So on the table here, I got all the tools we're going to need for this job. Um, I do have a couple of different indicator options and I'll go through how to set both of these up. Uh, one is a plunger style indicator with 100 thousandths travel on it. Works really easy for this procedure. Uh, and then of course we have the most common uh, one inch travel indicator that I'll show you how to utilize also. Uh, another device here is our tramming ring. This is the ring that we're going to place down on the table of the machine to use as our uh, indicating foundation here. And then just a, a wrench, uh, a collet holder to fix the indicator into the spindle and then a, a right angle combination square that we'll use for roughly aligning the head to the table. So we'll go over the machine and uh, let's get started. So on the tool head of the machine here, uh, we have two dimensions of uh, rotation that we're dealing with. Uh, one is our tilt coming off from the uh, ram of the machine here. Uh, and then of course our rotation on the side. Uh, so you can see there's a vernier scale for both dimensions that we're gonna use just roughly to get this thing uh, cl close to zero degrees. So what I'm gonna start with is the tilt of the head right here. Now I have three lock screws that lock this thing into position. So I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen those lock screws very slowly to allow me to rotate this part of the tool head. So once I have those things loose, now I can go up to this rack and pinion gear up here, and now I can rotate that. And what I'm gonna do is take my alignment indicator here and bring that right up to the zero degree mark. That's gonna get me fairly close before I even start to indicate this in place. So I'll just rotate this just a little bit more. And again, I'm just eyeballing the lines, the indicator mark to the zero degree line. And I'm gonna place that right at that point. So at this point, I'm not gonna lock these in place because I still have to do some fine adjustment with the indicator. Now for the rotation of the tool head here, I have four screws on the front of the head here that I'm going to loosen up. So I'll go ahead and just loosen these ever so slightly and very carefully because there may be some slack in the head here where it may start to rotate. You can see it's starting to move a little bit there already. So now I can come over to the right hand side of the machine and here I have a pinion gear that I can rotate to bring that to zero degrees. So I'm just gonna turn this ever so slightly. Again, watching my indicator mark and I'm gonna rotate that up until it reads zero degrees. Move these cables out of the way. So I'll just rotate this just a little bit more. There we're at five degrees, ever so slightly. And I'm just gonna come back through and just put just a small amount of tension just very light tension on two of these screws at this point because I don't want the head to flop over to the other side of rotation. There is a little bit of backlash in these gears, so I don't want to have this thing tip too far. So right there, I am right at zero degrees. So our rotation and our tilt, we just have them aligned. Now we can move on to the next step. All right, for the next process, I'm gonna use uh, this combination square head, and I'm just going to basically reference the table to the quill of the machine. 
This is going to give us just a little more degree of accuracy than we have just reading the vernier dials on the side. So what I'm going to do is just take my square and I'm going to place it on the table. And now I'm just going to bump it out. You notice I already have the quill fully extended and I'm just going to place this against the edge of the quill. And now you can see I have a larger gap at the bottom than I do at the top. So that's gonna tell me that I need to rotate my head just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, engage this pinion screw. And I'm gonna just rotate it until I get zero gap at the top of the ruler and at the bottom. So just ever so slightly right there i have it where i have zero gap here and zero gap there so now i have my rotation fairly close now i can go ahead and check my tilt so here when i bring it up to the quill now i have no gap at the bottom a larger gap at the top so now i can go ahead and make my adjustment at that point ever so slightly, a little bit at a time, until I get zero gap, top and bottom at that point. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. So again, we just took it a little bit closer than our vernier scale, just using a square. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get my plunger indicator set up in the quill of the machine, and I'll get my tramming ring on the table. All right, so after we finished up with the uh, combination square alignment to get us a little bit closer, we're really uh, looking to get it exact now. So I got the plunger indicator set up along with my tramming ring. I went through and cleaned and stoned the table so there's no nicks or burrs on it. So now I'm ready to go ahead and bring the knee up and uh, make contact with my indicator. And before I make any contact, I'm just gonna get it close and then I'm just gonna double check my tracking on my tramming ring just to make sure the indicator doesn't fall off at any point. So there we have it pretty well centered on our tramming ring. So now I can go ahead and bring my knee up until it makes contact with the indicator and I'm just going to preload about a half of a revolution. That gives me about 50 thousandths of preload. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and start locking my table and the knee of the machine also. That's going to get rid of any kind of backlash that we have uh, in any moving components here. So everything is nice and tight with no movement. So I preloaded my indicator 50 thousandths of an inch. I'm just going to go ahead and just zero out my indicator. Now I'm going to work this in two different directions separately. So I'm going to start with my left to right alignment. That's going to be the rotation of the head. So I'm just going to zero out on this side. And I'll go ahead and sweep the indicator over to the other side. And now I can see it's starting to fall off negative direction. So I'm about negative 17 thousandths. So if I come back over to this side, I'm going to move this side into the negative direction to counteract that. I'm just going to rotate the pinion just a little bit. Maybe I'll start small amounts. I'll go five thousandths negative on this side. And I'm going to re-zero. And now I'll travel over to the opposite side. So it's still falling in the negative direction, but now we're only about negative five thousandths. So we definitely improved it. So I'm going to come back over to this side. And again, to counteract negative movement to this side, I'm going to go negative on this side. And I'm just going to move it just a couple of thousandths of an inch, very slightly. And now I'll re-zero again. So I'm zero there. I'll go ahead and sweep it over to the other side. And I'm reading exactly zero on the left-hand side. So I'm zero and zero, this side and this side. Now I can start working the tilt of the tool head front to back. Now, since I'm zero zero here essentially if i bring the tilt to read zero on my indicator since i have not moved it that should get me fairly close so i'm just going to rotate the pinion gear 
very carefully and just bring that to zero right there and now I'll go ahead and sweep it towards the back side and that got me fairly close I'm at the negative direction approximately 12 thousandths so again the same principle over here I'm just gonna rotate it negative direction just a little bit and I'll zero out sweep it towards the back side and it improved a little bit here now because the pivot points are different than the rotation uh, it would be slightly different movement on the indicator but we're at negative 10 on the back side negative 10 thousandths back to zero so I'm gonna go negative direction on the front again so maybe I'll go just another five thousandths negative I'm gonna re-zero my indicator sweep it towards the back side and it improved again, but ever so slightly, negative eight thousandths on the back. So we'll return back to the front. Go negative direction again in the front to counteract the back. I'm going to go a little bit further, though. I'm going to go negative ten thousandths in the front. And then I'll re-zero. I'll go ahead and sweep it towards the back side. And now you can see we're reading exactly zero on the back side. So we got zero, zero on the back. I'm just gonna double check now my left to right. So here I'm reading zero, zero on the front yet, and I'm still at zero on the left hand side. So we're essentially reading exactly zero, 360 degrees of rotation. So we have this head perfectly trammed now. I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening up my lock screws. Now at the point uh, before with the combination square, we did snug two of these. So there is a little bit of tension on it. So I'm gonna go to my opposite two screws, hand tight. And again, I'm just going to a little bit at a time, just maybe an eighth of a turn on each of those. And then I'll go back to the other two. And I'm just bringing all four of these tight equally to counteract any kind of twist or torque that I may be applying to this tooling head. So I'm just going a little bit at a time, just a crisscross motion. Until we're fully snug. And I'm just going to double check my tram and I can see it did not move at all. So now I'll go ahead, tighten up the remaining three on the tilt of the tool head and again I'm just going to snug all three of them up equally just to prevent any kind of movement or torque as this thing is tightening up. And now I can just go ahead and double check my indicator and I have no movement on that at all. So there we have our head completely trammed so it's nice and square to our table. That way any kind of drilling operations or holes are going to be nice and straight. Any kind of milling, face milling operations, uh, the face of the tool will be nice and square to our table. So that's our plunger indicator that we used here. It's a really nice tool for doing this job. Uh, not always accessible in, in most of your common machine shops. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'll get our one inch travel indicator set up basically to do the same thing just to show you how it's set up in the spindle. All right, so here I just took a few minutes. Uh, I removed our plunger indicator and just did a quick little setup with our magnetic base and a one inch travel indicator. Uh, not always the best option, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, but for all our students, they have this uh, tool in their toolbox. So it gives them the option to use what they already have. Uh, not all shops are going to have a, a plunger indicator or have one in your toolbox. So this just gives you another option. Um, but essentially we're doing the same thing. You know, we got a one inch travel indicator. I just found a collet that matches the post of this uh, magnetic base here and just clamped it in place. Uh, another thing this gives us a little more travel. Uh, if we don't always have a combination square to get us close, this is going to allow us a little more variance from side to side, front to back. Um, and it's relatively inexpensive for a mag base and a one inch travel indicator. 
Uh, another thing too, I'm using a tramming ring here. These are purchased through some different companies. Don't always have to use this. Uh, you know, you can go right down onto the table of the machine. Uh, sometimes it's kind of difficult with the T-slots and grooves in the table. Uh, we do have some other uh, precision ground plates that we use for the same operations. So a lot of different options for uh, squaring or tramming the head of the machine. So that's going to wrap this up for us today. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. Hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next time.